Is it right to call yourself a sinner after you're born again? This is a weighty question, and the way we view this can determine significantly how we live in victory. Let's break it down. What's going on, guys? Thank you for jumping on here with me. So today we're going to be talking about a pivotal question that I've been hearing thrown around lately. Is it right to call yourself a sinner after you're born again? And before I just jump right into my answer, I want to lay down a foundation of our essence as human beings, how God created us with a spirit, a soul, and a body. And I feel like this is just so important, and I don't really hear many people talking about this. So I don't think this video is going to be too long. I'm going to just jump right to this because I know everybody's attention span is short nowadays. But I'm just going to funnel you guys with a lot of information, and I feel like it's going to bring so much clarity on this topic. So God created us with a spirit, a soul, and a body. So when we're born again, when we come to Jesus and we receive Christ, we receive the finished work of Jesus, we make him Lord of our lives, we're born again. Our spirits are born again. The Holy Spirit regenerates our spirit. If we look at John 3, John 3, uh, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he says, That which is flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. So Jesus is referring to the Holy Spirit coming into our spirit and making us born again. He says, don't marvel when I tell you that you have to be born again. In Titus 3.5, it talks about the regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. In the Bible, it says that uh, we were dead in our trespasses and we were made alive together in Christ. So in the garden, right, if we go to Genesis 3, God said to Adam and Eve, if you eat this fruit, you will surely die. So they died spiritually when, when they ate that fruit. And through original sin, we all died spiritually in our spirits. That's why you've seen, seen in their actions, they ran, they hid, they tried to cover themselves. They were dead spiritually. Something changed and, and we adopted a sin nature. Okay, so our spirits died. We were dead in our trespasses. But in Christ... When we come to Jesus, he makes us alive again. We're born again. Our spirits are born again. But we still have our soul and we still have our flesh. All right. So our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. Our soul is like who we are, our personality. We could look at the scripture, uh, what is a prophet a man when he gains the whole world but loses his soul? All right. God looks at our soul as like our inner self, who we are. Um, apart from the body, we're not just made up of a body. We have a soul. We got Matthew 10, 28, and do not fear those who could kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So Jesus, again, he's, he's referring to our soul. There's a part of us that's deeper than our body that he considers us. That's who we are, our soul. Ezekiel 18.4, Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul who sins shall die. All right, so let's just keep our context of what we're studying. He's referring to the soul dying, punishing the soul. All right, so the soul is who we are, our inner man, our mind, will, and emotions. So let's understand this. When we're born again, the Holy Spirit comes into our spirit, makes us alive in Christ, regenerates our spirit. We have a brand new spirit. The old passes away, the new comes. Now we have the soul. Our soul is transformed by the renewing of our mind. Our mind is in the soul, and our heart is the deepest roots of our mind. Our heart can be considered like our mindset, the foundation of our mind. So now the Holy Spirit's in us. He's ministering to us as we read the word. We're reading the word. We see truths like uh, sin will have no dominion over you. The law of the spirit of life has set you free from the law of sin and death. You are set free from sin. If the son set you free, you are free indeed. We start to know those truths. And when we know the truth, the truth sets us free. It takes root in our heart. And from the heart flows the springs of life. So this is all about 
it all starts with the finished work of Christ and the Holy Spirit coming in us. This is why the Bible talks about being sanctified through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does the work in us as we read the Word, as we believe the truth. So Jesus came, conquered sin and death, defeated sin on the cross. He said, it is finished. The work's done. Now the Holy Spirit's in us, and He's transforming us as we believe and receive the Word. See, we have free will. We have to receive what the Holy Spirit wants to do in us. He's a gentleman. He's not going to force His way onto us. He created us with free will. Jesus, God created us as free beings. So we have to receive what he wants to do. And that's what takes place in our soul. This is the sanctification process. And I just want to read 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, starting at verse 17. Now, the Lord is spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So there it is right there. We're transformed by renewing our mind. I believe that. So the spirit of the Lord is in me. I'm free. That's it. I believe it. I receive it. And I walk in that. Now I walk by the Spirit. And that's what the Spirit is ministering to me through His Word. All right? So we can walk in freedom by receiving it through the Word. And it's such a beautiful thing. So we just have to actually receive it by faith. We have to actually believe this stuff. If you don't have the faith for it, you're not going to receive anything. Because the Bible says in James, uh, you're a double-minded man. You have to believe if you're double-minded, you can't expect to receive anything from God. If we don't have faith, it's impossible to please God. So it has to start with our faith. But let's continue. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with an unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the, into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is Spirit. So you can see here that the Spirit of the Lord is sanctifying us, bringing us from one degree of glory to another. So now let's talk about the flesh. The flesh is our sin nature. So through original sin, through Adam, we developed a sin nature that spread through all humanity. If we look at Romans 5, 12, it says, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and he's talking about Adam, death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. So the thing about the sin nature is we still have the sin nature even after we're born again because we're still in this body, this fleshly body. Now we know that our body itself isn't sinful, but there is some sort of attachment with the sinful nature and the body. And we can see this in Romans 8.13. It says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. So Paul calls this sinful nature the flesh and the body. So there is some sort of attachment, but we also know the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same Spirit living within you. So we know that our bodies are to be sanctified. In the same way our soul is sanctified, our body is to be sanctified. But the sin nature is to be crucified. And the beautiful thing about this is we don't have to crucify the sin nature in our own strength. It's all done through the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Watch this. In Romans 6, it says, The old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. So Jesus defeated the flesh on the cross. It's already done. We just now have to submit to the Spirit. And as we submit to the Spirit, we're crucifying the flesh, because if we walk by the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. In Romans 6, it also says, Do you not know that if you present to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, either sin, which leads to death, or obedience, which leads to righteousness. So he's saying, if you choose to be a slave of sin, you will be. But if you choose to be obedient to the Spirit, it will lead to righteousness. Now, we also know that the Spirit and the flesh are against each other. We can see in Galatians 5, 17, it says, For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. 
for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So we have this war going on with the sin nature and the spirit, the Holy Spirit living inside of us. So now we have a choice to make, and this all comes down to our submission. What are we going to choose? What do we want in our lives? See, when we're born again, if we try to live in the flesh, we'll be miserable. Our only true satisfaction comes from Christ, comes from walking in the Spirit. So now, I want to get back to our original question. When we're born again, should we be calling ourselves sinners? Now, when I answer this question, I want you guys to fully understand that I am talking about our identity in Christ. I'm referring to who we are in Christ. I'm not talking about our ability to commit sin. Yes, we all can make mistakes. We can all fall into sin. We all have the ability to do that. And if we do, there's no condemnation in Christ. We get right back up and we repent and we keep pushing. But in our identity in Christ, should we be calling ourselves sinners? A lot of people will say, yeah, I'm a sinner saved by grace. But I sin every day and I continue to sin. I can't stop sinning. The Bible doesn't say that. It says that we're set free from sin. It says, should we still live in sin so grace may abound? No. How could you still live in sin? How could you die to sin and still live in it? We're supposed to be dead to sin, alive to God in Christ. Sin is crucified at the cross. And this is the scripture that I really want to pin down on this. Romans 8 says, the mind set on the spirit is life and peace, but the mindset on the flesh is death. So if we know that sin only remains in our flesh, that's the only place where sin remains, in our flesh. If we submit to the flesh, the carnal mind, the carnal desires of the flesh, that's where sin remains. Our spirit is sanctified completely. Our soul is who we are. Our mind, will, and emotions, remember. And our soul can submit to either the spirit or the flesh. So if sin only remains in our flesh and our flesh is going to die one day, because when we die, we're going to be in heaven with new bodies, a spiritual body. We're not going to have this flesh anymore. We're not going to have the sin nature anymore. So if eventually the sin nature is going to be gone, sin will be gone. Why would we identify as sinners? All throughout the Bible, it talks about us being set free from sin to not go on sinning. Jesus, when he healed people, he would say, go sin no more constantly or there's so many scriptures but i'll just i'll recite a couple but there's so many that says that we shouldn't be living in sin that we shouldn't be sinning why would we be calling ourselves sinners then especially if like i said when we're gonna die we're not gonna be sinning in heaven it has nothing to do with our identity anymore and when you start to actually believe this about yourself remember we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. So that what, we what takes root in our heart will flow the springs of life. If you believe you're a sinner, from your heart will flow sinful desires. But if you believe you're righteous through Jesus Christ and you're set free from sin, you will start to walk in that truth. Again, the mindset and the spirit, life and peace. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. But the mindset on the flesh where sin dwells is death. Where is your mindset? 1 John 3, 9 says, No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning, because he has been born of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. So this is where I stand with it. Should we be calling ourselves sinners? No. Not at all. Because it's not who we are in Christ. It's not what Jesus paid for. All throughout the Bible, it says that we should not keep on sinning. That we're dead to sin, alive to God. So no, it has no place in us. And especially when we get to heaven, that the sin nature will be gone. We're not going to be living in sin in heaven. It has nothing to do with us in Christ anymore. Now, our ability to sin, totally different story. We can make a mistake. If we do, we repent, we keep going, like I said before. And I'm telling you, when this revelation hits your heart, you're going to walk in so much victory, and you're truly going to understand what I'm trying to say here. You are the righteousness of God. 
You are more than a conqueror. You are a new creation in Christ. You're not a sinner. You're free. You're free from sin. Amen. I pray that blessed you guys. I'll see you next time. God bless.